suggestions. Hello. Okay, we're on here. Uh, YouTube uh, threw a curve at me. They changed their interface, so I spent a little while figuring out how this all works. So today, I want to talk about tutors and uh, why a tutor is important. And uh, of course, you know that. Uh, let's make sure that I've got the sound off here. First of all, okay. Yeah, I keep track of the questions on my iPad and I sometimes forget to mute it. Uh, now, you know that I am a proponent of input as the, the best way to get the language into you. That is reading, and listening, and some review of words and occasional, you know, looking at some of the grammar rules, not to try to remember them, but just to try to explain some of the things that you're coming across in the language. And many of these things we notice, right? Uh, but we sometimes need to be reminded, for example. And, and that's so, the tutor. The tutor is, first, first and foremost, is a source of encouragement and stimulus. Uh, we need to be motivated to learn. Uh, now, the tutor needn't be the only source of motivation. Um, if I uh, meet a, a Korean person somewhere and say a few words in Korean, then I'm I sort of all of a sudden I'm motivated. Geez, I really should do something about improving my Korean. So the motivation could be a random encounter with someone. It could be a movie. Uh, my wife is watching this Turkish uh, soap opera on Netflix. And uh, yeah, I want to get out Turkish. So there's any number of things that can be motivating, but I think the tutor is, is a very good one. Because, so right now I'm doing two, in this 90 day challenge, I'm doing two languages, Arabic and Persian. Uh, you know, it's difficult to pull yourself away. You're, I'm, I've been on Arabic, now I'm gonna go to Persian. But the fact that I have an encounter with my tutor is, is motivating, I gotta get my Persian back up to a level where I can at least carry on a conversation. So it motivates me and I look forward to seeing my tutors, whether I'm going from my Arabic to my Persian tutor or from my Persian tutor back to my Arabic tutor. Both of them are excellent tutors, very encouraging. They know how to keep the conversation going. It's, it's too much of a burden for the learner to come on with all kinds of things that the learner wants to talk about. So the tutor has to be very good at keeping the conversation going, and of course not and finding that right level of sort of correction in fact i prefer simply get a report and i'm going to show you a report that i got uh, from my tutor um and uh, so that that picks up on some of the things that i had trouble with the tutor can also point out some things like many of the of the things that the grammar book explains i mean they fall into sort of different categories some of the things they explain you simply don't understand because you haven't had any experience with it before. Uh, so for example, early on in the Arabic explanation, they'll tell you that, you know, uh, the plural of inanimate things takes the feminine singular, like this. You hear that for the first time, you see that A, that can't be, and B, you don't really understand understand and you don't really focus on it. So in Arabic, the relative pronoun who or which is aleti for feminine singular, aledi for uh, masculine singular, and aledina for um, plural masculine. Because plural anything else, inanimate, so it, Aladina for people, but if it's inanimate, if it's a thing, then it goes back to aleti, which is the feminine singular. Well, I've been merrily charging along in Arabic, having read that explanation some long time ago. It hadn't register on me at all. I don't really notice it while I'm in the language because it's so much stuff is happening, so many new words. I have I don't really necessarily identify nouns as masculine and feminine, although it's not that difficult difficult to do, but it's still not clicking in for me. And so the tutor points this out to me and like, wow, yeah, okay. And now, because I have wondered, why is it Alibi, Aleti, Alidina? And now she explains it. 
And it's probably the third or fourth time that I get that explanation. But it now comes at a time when I'm receptive to that explanation because it's something now that I've started to focus on. Because I'm not, you know, I've, other things have fallen into place. Now I'm in a position to receive that explanation. So, and the, the tutor, the tutor I have for Arabic, she's very good. She doesn't force stuff on me. She certainly doesn't ask me to perform after she's explained it. She just gently explains things. Some of these things stick, some of them don't. And we always have a very interesting conversation. And the, the, um, you know, I have a twice a week with Arabic and once a week with, with Persian. But even if I'm on one language and after you go three uh, tutoring sessions a week, which is or can be difficult to fit into my schedule, I got a whole bunch of other stuff I'm doing. That's not enough speaking to become a good speaker. Okay, Th that's the first thing. If you, if you want to speak well, you have to speak a lot. And so if you have a lot of time and a lot of money, you can line up five hours a day of speaking. And that will be enough speaking to make a difference. But the speaking that I do is more of a kind of catalyst. So it stimulates me. I want to, you know, prepare myself for the next session with my tutor. Uh, it reminds me that I better crank it. If I'm moving from one language to the other, I got to crank my level up. I mean, there's no question that if I've been listening for to an hour or two of whatever Persian Arabic, I'm going to do better in the session with my tutor. And nobody likes to do poorly. Now, we don't do as well as we would like, and we do better sometimes than others. But then I, I see, I get this report, and then I can listen to it many times, and then I can once again review it. And I still forget a lot of the new vocabulary that's there, but it's all part of the process. And I can go back, as I'll show you, to my conversation reports that I've received, and I can review them from like three months ago. And so this is also content. So I treat the session with my tutor as a place for encouragement, for stimulus, for some explanation, which might be more alive and more timely than the explanation I get out of a book. Um, there is some speaking, but the amount of speaking is not that great, but at least it's some. It, in, it somehow seems to make me more alert when I'm listening and reading. So it, it, it ups my level of focus when I'm listening and reading. But ultimately, I'm relying on my input to improve my language skills and hope that one day I will be in a situation in Persian or Arabic where I will be able to speak more. Uh, in Persian, that opportunity will present itself when I go back to Vancouver because there are simply so many uh, Persian speakers in North Vancouver. Arabic speakers, not so many. But when I was in Morocco, I was in taxis with people and we were having all kinds of conversations in Arabic. Uh, and so, but then I was surrounded by it. Okay. So you eventually have to get yourself into that situation, either by having, as was the case when I was learning Chinese, I was in a non Mandarin speaking environment in Hong Kong, but I had three hours a day with teachers. And the teachers would organize uh, dinners, we would have lunch with our teachers. So we had lots of opportunity to speak uh, Mandarin. Uh, if I had a community of uh, Farsi speakers here uh, or Arabic speakers, and we got together once or twice a week for dinner and chatted and so forth, that would create more of an opportunity to really get into speaking. But even a little bit of speaking that I do with my tutors, it, it helps. It, it increases, it improves the quality of my my focus and it gives me sort of learning content you know that i can go back to and go back to and i'm just going to quickly demonstrate that uh, and oh if i find the one where we talked about language learning you'll see that it contains a lot of uh, phrases that uh, kind of reflect my philosophy on all of this and if i find that i might even read it to you in arabic uh and then we can open it up for questions so i'm going to share the screen So let's go back. I don't know which one this, this was. 
that fee, let's go to lessons. So you see, I have 35 conversation reports in Arabic. And you'll also see here some of the other things that I've been doing. Al Jazeera podcast, which are still difficult, but I still plow through them. Asimil, which I don't really like the content very much, but I do it. We have Who Is She? We have Pons Van Kat. Um, yeah. But if I go into my conversation reports, uh, so it goes right back to August. So I've had all of these conversation reports. I can open up any one of them and go in and relive the uh, discussions that I had. Re recently, I stayed largely with uh, Dahlia, who is a very good tutor. And uh, let me just have a look. I there was kind of interesting because I was reviewing it and it talked about language learning. Uh, no. Let's see. If I find it quickly, I'll, I'll go over it with you. If I don't find it, then we just leave it. So, no. One more try. And if not, then we just scratch it. Yeah. So, uh, what has happened is she sent me a report. I import it as a lesson. And so I can read it. I can hear her. I'm not going to do it, but I can hear her read it. I can download it to listen away from it. And so, Hunak Ashian Reir, you see, it's so difficult. Reir Munatif, Munatifia, Reir Munatifia, Fi Majal. Talim uh, uh, So there are things that are illogical in the teaching of languages. I agree with that. Uh, anas, people, Anas, you akidun al umur akthar min al They confuse things or make things more complicated than necessary. Anyway, I won't go through the whole thing. But it talks about the importance, the things that I talked about right now. So we had a conversation about the subject of the role of tutors and the importance of motivation and so forth and so on. And so I get a lot of this um, vocabulary and I can listen to it over and over again. And it's not that long, like it's three minutes it's long. Will I remember all those words? No, but it's a start. It's a start. And those words may come up somewhere else and eventually Eventually, they will slaw, uh, you know, uh, kick in. So, enough of that. Now, let me go back. I wanted to, one thing I wanted to show you, by the way. Okay. So, one of the things that I talk about, and I think is very important in language learning, is to cover the same material in different ways. So, I'm on my iPad a lot, but I also like books, and I like different books. And often, starting in language, I'll have two different starter books, and I've tended to go to teach yourself colloquial, sometimes SML. But I was in downtown Palm Springs, and I decided that I wanted to go to the local bookstores. I went to Barnes & Noble to find out what they had in Arabic, and they had a book, which I bought. Arabic for dummies. And it's actually quite good. I like the way they present things. A lot of what they present, it's What's so great about it is when, when you buy a book and it kind of reinforces things that you kind of are starting to realize or to know, and you get it again, and of course it's in a different form, so it's, it's sort of a combination of repetition and fresh and new. And so I find myself more receptive to that. But what I wanted to point out is, it says here right on the cover, find free conversational audio tracks online. I don't know if you can read that, but that's what it says. Find free audio tracks online. So buried in here somewhere, I sort of look through this, but where do I find these audio tracks? And it says, go to this website, dummies, whatever, uh, Arabic for dummies, free download. I go there, there is no place where you can download audio. So of course it's contact us. So I go contact us. And of course, it's, you, as always happens, you get to some frequently answered question list. I don't want frequently answered questions because no matter what you punch in there as your question, they not, it always comes back with, sorry, no information. I've managed to find a place where there's a live chat. So I get on with someone 
and chat. And I say, I bought this book. I want to access the free audio. Oh, what was the ISBN number? So I find the ISBN number. And uh, I said, I'm going out now, but you send me an email uh, and tell me where I can get the audio. So I come back and there's an, uh, there's an email that says, uh, sorry, that was a mistake in the book. We don't offer free audio. Like, how is that possible? How is it possible to sell a book which has three things on the cover that, that want to entice you to buy the book, including find free conversational audio tracks online. And when you contact them, they say, that's a mistake. That's unbelievable. Anyway, with that, I will now move on to questions. All right. I mean, I, I just can't believe that a, a, a presumably reputable publisher could do something like that. Okay. The first one's stuff KK. No, no, no. What is this KKK? Is that supposed to be laughter? Maybe. What's good today, my language family? I don't know. Everyone is really just a big kid. No, 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 no. I'm learning Indonesian, Cambodian, and Vietnamese. Wow. I'm kind of busy. Okay. So far, okay, lots of comments. Okay. Anyway, if you guys care about good listening to him, vote on this forum post. Okay, playlist. Uh, playlist, yeah, the playlist, uh, I'm not quite sure what the vote is all about, but uh, we are going to do things to make the playlist work better. I think the what we are going to do, I don't want to pre yet, but it, it's going to get better. I don't think URLs in YouTube chats works. Okay, add a feature. So that is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so the 100 playlist limit, uh, I think what we're going to do is, uh, right now I have a number of problems with the playlist. If I add new items to the playlist, they're often scattered throughout the playlist, so I can't find them. But realistically, we don't need more than 100 items on the playlist at any one time. So I think what should happen is that as we add more items to the top, to the, to the bottom, the ones at the top are simply kicked off the playlist. Uh, if we want to, but they sort of stay there. And then if you delete stuff, then uh, they will come back in. Uh, more complex, yeah, here. I would also be willing to pay extra for a separate app with more complex playlist features. Like I'm in favor of albums in the playlist, but for whatever reason, whether it be resources, programming resources, or, you know, our, our uh, server resources, I don't know. There seems to be some resistance to this. But put all your ideas on the forum. Play next, play later features. Okay, I mean, these are all good. So, I mean, the limit is, okay. Uh, also, maybe a reminder feature to review a course in either one week or two weeks. I think Saudi doing wonders. All right, okay. Um, yeah, listen, these are all great ideas. Uh, Eric, <laughs> who's watching, uh, taking notes. And uh, we will see what we can do now. Uh, okay, so far, lots of back and forth. Banter, uh, you mentioned about how you would study if you have more time. Okay, question, how would you study if you had four hours a day? If I had four to five hours a day, so the idea is that whatever activity we're doing, we get tired of doing it. So if I have one hour, I can listen 45, hours, 45 minutes wherever I am and do a bit of reading and linking. If I have more time, I would probably spend more time reviewing in the vocabulary section. I would have more online discussions with my tutor. Um, would I translate? Well, in my activities, I would certainly do the dictation function where I hear the word and then I have to type it. Uh, I would do all five activities. I tend to now go through my flashcard review very quickly. I would spend more time on that. Um, so I would just introduce more different activities. When you say, would I translate? I don't think I would translate other than that um, our flashcards, we do have, call it reverse, um, reverse uh, flashcards. Also, you can use the, like the activity section if you save phrases and get rid of the words in a given lesson and you just work on phrases, then you can have all those phrases there and you can do them all in reverse 
in reverse flashcard. So you would have to translate all these phrases. Uh, and these phrases would then also show up in your dictation. So you would hear the phrase and you would have to type it. So I would experiment with different ways. <laughs> Link t-shirts, I talked to Mark. He's gonna, he's looking at, he has a friend who does stuff uh, of this nature and he's gonna look at what we can do to come up with some kind of a, thing about t-shirts is we, we, you know, we have to, whatever we do, we have to do equally for, uh, you know, men and women. So I don't know whether women are less inclined to wear t-shirts with a logo on it. I don't know uh, if people can volunteer their ideas on that subject. Hello from Serbia. Uh, okay. Uh, hi everyone from Russia, Dimitri. I can't wait for like t-shirts from Bahrain. Okay. I'm just enjoying my learning Arabic. Thanks for speaking clearly and calling it Persian. Yeah, someone caught me up on that, and I, I like the word Persian. I mean, Farsi is the Persian word for Persian. Uh, it probably comes from Arabic. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Says, yeah, I personally like learning more than one language at the same time, blah, blah, blah. Hello, Wafa. Personal preference. Uh, hello. Uh, okay. So a lot of comment. Uh, Stephen Krashen says to drink more coffee to learn languages. Well, first of all, I had my coffee and I'm now drinking tea. Stephen Krashen is convinced that coffee delays the, uh, possibility of, um, you know, Alzheimer's. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I think coffee is a good drink. And if you like it, drink coffee. I doubt if it has any noticeable effect on your language learning. Do you feel you are comfortable when speaking Russian and do you still use it? Uh, I mean, I don't use it much, obviously. I rarely run into anyone who speaks Russian. Uh, yeah, I mean, comfortable enough. Uh, I will be going, as I said earlier, I will be going to Ukraine and I'll be speaking a lot of Russian there and I'm not concerned. I will do fine. I will be a little bit rusty at first, but uh, yeah, it's it just makes it to my top 10, you know, like it's not at the level of my Japanese, uh, French, uh, Spanish, German, Swedish, but it's up there. And the interesting thing is while I speak languages like Swedish or German uh, better, uh, I have a, a larger vocabulary in Russian because I've been you know, I read out Russian so very deliberately, but I haven't spoken as much, so the speaking will be a little bit rusty. Uh, now, if you're a C2, does the learner still need to have tutor sessions or is it, isn't it more necessary? Well, if you're C2, like if I'm C2, I, I would not, like I'm not C2 in anything except possibly French, uh, but I'm sort of, strong B2, C1 in, you know, Japanese, Chinese, Spanish and stuff. I don't have tutors for those. Uh, I feel that I've reached a level that I can't go forward. What should I do? Question is you want, are you at a level where you're satisfied or you're at a level where you would like to go forward, but you can't? If you're at a level where you're good in the language, you are in the soft spot, you're in the sweet spot rather, you can just keep enjoying the language, watching movies, reading books, listening to stuff, and you will constantly improve. What's the problem? That's good. What is your opinion about Russian people? Okay. Uh, there was a famous man called Jonathan Swift, who wrote, he wrote the Gulliver, he did, I think so, Gulliver's Travels. Um, he said that I hate all, Frenchman, but I like Monsieur so and so. I hate all lawyers, but I like so. But the point is, anytime you make generalizations about people, the generalizations are are going to, are going to tend towards caricature. My impression of Russian people is that they are extremely warm, uh, interesting, lively. Uh, um, creative. I mean, you, you've only to see them in, in hockey, which I like, 
in, uh, in the arts, the quality of audiobooks, for example, from Russia, the quality of their theatrical productions, all of these things are absolutely excellent. Um, the, uh, there are political problems today. And, uh, you know, in different countries, people are influenced by their political environment. And this can sometimes create frictions with other countries. Let me just leave it there. Uh, is it actually possible for someone to reach C2 in a language learned in adulthood? Or is it just unrealistic? Uh, no, I think it's absolutely realistic to reach C2 in adulthood. But it does require a lot of reading and listening. Like I learned French in, uh, no, I had French at school. But my Chinese, which I started at age whatever, 21, or my Japanese, I'm not C2. But if I set myself the goal of reaching C2, I could do it. And it would require a lot of listening and reading, really expanding vocabulary. Like you have to have a large vocabulary. You've got to approach the vocabulary of a native speaker. And you have to be in situations where you have to use the language a lot. So probably you would have to go to the country because to be C2 is not enough to have a good accent and to sound fluent on a limited number of subjects. You've got to be the full gamut. You've got to be able to read literature. You've got to be able to express yourself elegantly. And so this requires a massive amount of input and probably to live in the environment. Uh, does your barber speak Persian? Okay, my barber at home in Vancouver, whom I just, you know, it's very funny because I have been going to a barber who was a Russian speaking Ukrainian. So I'd go there and we'd speak Russian. But then I went there twice and his shop was closed and I wasn't happy with him anyway. So there's another barber in West Vancouver. So I phone up and this woman answers with the most, you know, noticeable Persian accent on her English. So I say, wow, that's great. So I say, I'm coming over to get my haircut. She says, fine. So I go over there and I greet her by, you know, holy chitori. And she said, how did you know I was Persian? <laughs> like your accent. She didn't think she had an accent. She'd been in Canada for 20 years. That's fine. Uh, I wanted to focus on blah, blah, blah. I think I stuck. Yeah. Okay, lots of back and forth here. Uh, so what are we going to do when the tutor is not teaching well? The, the tutor doesn't teach. If I were to have read that text in Arabic, tutor is there to encourage, provide some explanation, but there's lots of explanation. You can find your own explanation. Don't expect the tutor to teach you. The tutor is there to encourage you, motivate you, stimulate you, get you going. If you don't like your tutor, find another tutor. It's important to like your tutor. It's important to like the content you're listening to. It's important to like the voice you're listening to. It's important to like the subject matter. It's important to do things that you like. If you don't like your tutor, find another tutor. Um, for me, practically the only subject that you shouldn't discuss with your tutor when learning languages is learning languages. It's counter, it causes interference between the language scores. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. And uh, I think the more familiar the subject is, the more suitable it is for a conversation because you're interested in the subject, you're familiar with the subject. Even if you don't have the words, you can get into the conversation. If you talk about something that you don't know anything about, it's a lot more difficult. So no, I don't agree with that, Patchy, not for a minute. She was a young couple to get English a little bit of Francais care up and there's Dutch after French. When you speak so many languages, okay. Okay, I'm a native speaker of Russian. If anyone wants to be free language exchange Russian fee fee, okay. You're interested with this, uh, have you considered to learn Indonesian? You know, Michael Respicio, with all due respect, you keep on coming at me with the same question. Why don't I learn Tagalog? Why don't I learn uh, other Asian languages? I'm going to learn the languages <laughs> that I'm interested when I'm interested in them. There is no why. Whatever, at some point, if I meet someone, Indonesian, a friend motivates me. We have Indonesian now at length, Indonesian mini stories. I was in Bali once. I've also been to Jakarta. If I were going there, I would learn it. Uh, Tim, I finally made it. It seems like you're inspiring a lot of people. Good. 
and Skype with you about these workouts. Okay. Oh, yes, Tim, who motivated me to do these workouts. Okay, so, Mingo Leva. Steve, would you say listening in your sleep to podcasts, conversation, that your learning is beneficial? Absolutely not. When I sleep, I sleep. I can't imagine having podcasts on while sleeping. I do occasionally speak different languages in my dreams. What are the beginner resources you find useful when you learn Russian? Okay. I started Russian at a, before we had Link, and, and in fact, very soon thereafter, or before we had Russian on, very soon thereafter, we got Russian at Link. I had a Russian employee. I got him to translate and record who is she. But I used teach yourself. I used colloquial. I have a tendency to get any of these starter books, two or three of them, cover the same material. And then it was just, you know, as soon as I could, I remember my first novel was the Kreutzer Sonata by uh, Tolstoy, for which I got the audiobook. The big advantage with Russian is there's so many high quality audiobooks of basically 19th century literature is free. If it's 20th century, you can find, you, you just buy the ebook and bring it in the link. But to get started, I, I would, I would, what I did was I used the most common, I also bought Asimil, so I used the most common starter material as well as whatever we had at Link. Uh, have you thought, okay, what are the biggest, have you thought about trying to read a history book in Arabic or Farsi? I'm not yet there. Uh, one of the things that really helped me in Chinese is a book at a sort of a early intermediate level on Chinese history and civilization. So if there were a resource with audio in Arabic or Farsi that talked about history uh, and um, civilization, but it was a little simplified and it had audio, that would be great. Otherwise, it's a, just a tad difficult. The Persian online resource has a fair amount of good stuff in in Persian. Have you ever thought about working with people like Piotr from, so that, for example, if I buy his material, he gives me a code that automatically unlocks the content at link. Very good idea. Uh, Piotr has great material, absolutely recommend it. Uh, RealPolish.pl. Um, we have, I'll approach Piotr, I see, see what we could do in that regard. Interesting thought. We have approached different publishers to sell their material across Link. Uh, Piotr has given us a bit of his stuff. Uh, many publishers do that. They'll give us a few sample lessons and then encourage people to go to their site. Anyone learning Polish should know Piotr and realpolish.pl. Uh, yeah, so again, yeah, jump into authentic content as soon as possible. Of course, it's easier to do in some less languages than others. Uh, even in Greek, it's not too bad, but in Arabic and Persian, because the writing system is just a little more difficult. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Phil Kehoe, I think that's a great idea. And uh, I will, uh, uh, Eric of Link, please make a note of that. We should approach Kyoto. Gracias, Steve. I'm an English teacher from Spain, and your ideas and link have made me change dramatically the way I teach and learn. I'd love to use in class, but now we lost him. Uh, okay. So here's someone. So at any rate, anyone who wants to use link in the classroom, please contact us. You can send an email to me, Steve at link. We have a special sort of uh, link in the classroom package that we can work and we have some teachers in schools that are using it in that way. Somebody here, Jim points out that Persian comes from Greek, Farsi comes from Persian. Right. However, you know, it's like uh, Farsi means Persian. So since the word, the adjective for the country in English is Persian, then we should call the language Persian, just like we call German German. We don't call it Deutsch, even though the the Germans call their own language Deutsch. Oh, here we go. The other continues. The publishing industry and the education system are tough not to crack. I know. I know. Question. What are your thoughts on the AJATT method? I get that question every time. I have not used it. I cannot comment. Oh, link laptop stickers. All right. Uh, you know, one thing I was thinking of, but, it, you know, because I have the AirPods and 
sometimes like I was on my bicycle and my ear pod fell out. So I thought that's not very good. So then I found out that you can actually get little attachments to your AirPods. So I looked them up, but there's no place to put a logo. But it would be nice to have something with a linked logo that relates to how people study. So laptop, laptop sticker, something on your iPad, iPhone. It's a good idea. Have you ever used the Mina, Mina no Nihongo textbook? No, I have not. Sorry, when I was learning Japanese, it, I, I hadn't heard of it. I used Naganuma. Would you agree that doing well in a language exam does not necessarily mean you can speak it? Absolutely, I agree with that 100%. Uh, you know, in English-speaking Canada, kids have, depending on the province, 10 years of French at school in the regular system, leaving aside the, uh, the immersion. Uh, and the better kids pass, they do well in all their French exams and they can't speak. So it's, it's kind of, it's, a, it's, it's, it's ridiculous really, because if I were teaching uh, languages in school, I would focus entirely on input, discovery, comprehension, not producing the language, because you can study for a test and get something right, and then two weeks later, you've completely forgotten it. Whereas things that are put into your brain through massive input, listening and reading, it's, it stays, you can retrieve it eventually. Do you recommend it just for talking and developing the ability to listen or to, to listen and speak or for correct grammar questions? No, I don't rely on, my, this is Felipe, I don't rely on the tutor for grammar. If the tutor finds something that I, you know, like very often in our tutor report, I, I ask the tutor to do two things. First of all, to give me phrases, sentences, or not sentences so much as phrases and words that I have trouble with or that come up in our conversation. But then if there is a, a grammar issue that I keep on getting wrong, then she'll point that out. Go work on, and this, both my tutors do this, go work on this aspect of the language. So there can be some, uh, I would say the biggest thing is the stimulus, an opportunity to speak, uh, an opportunity to develop a report, which is then input that I can go back to again and again. And there will be the odd grammar correction, but it's not the main purpose. I see some Hebrew there. I, I stopped my Hebrew. So uh, do you agree that Dr Russian and German folk music is, is amazing? Uh, I agree that all folk music is amazing. I love Spanish folk music. Uh, down here in Palm Springs, we'll sometimes hear Mexican on the local radio, Mexican music, Peruvian music. Um, gosh, I can't remember. I mean, all, you know, uh, Greek music, you name it. Uh, they're all amazing. How to make kind of study French? How to make a plan to study French from scratch? Any language from scratch, you you got to start to get like a toehold in the language. So, get some starter books. You get on the material we have at link. Just let start out with short, uh, thirty seconds, and then gradually one minute, two minute, five minutes, and you just this process of listening and reading and reviewing words, and slowly, what seems a lot of noise at first, and where you can hardly tell where one word ends and the next word begins, slowly, 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 it starts to, like a jigsaw puzzle, as I said the other day, it starts to make sense. How to not feel bored. I'm never bored. I find the initial period in learning a language is um, quite exciting because uh, all of a sudden you can say something. Uh, okay, now, uh, when will you be doing it? I'm going to Japan. Japan in the fall. Oh no, I'm going to Ukraine in May. Uh, no, yes, my grandkids speak English with a British accent. Uh, what is the minimum amount of time you should spend in a country to improve your ability in language? You don't have to spend any amount of time to improve your ability. I just said to be a C2, you kind of have to go to a country. You can do a lot on your own. Uh, minimum time, I mean, I in the case of Czech, I study for a year and then I spent six or seven days, I think six days in Prague trying to do a lot of speaking. It's whatever you're able to arrange. If you are studying the language, you are motivated to go there and motivated to spend as much time as you can. Do you think online tutors will replace personal teachers? I think there'll be more and more. There are more and more online tutors. 
Um, no Persian does not come from Greek, but from Asian Persian word Paris. Yeah, ancient Greeks were right. What do you think about italki? And I don't know Cambly, but italki, I've used it a lot. It's very good. They have some excellent tutors. Is it better to have native tutors or non-native tutors as well? Okay. The tutor, personally, I would not use a non-native tutor. Um, well, let me back that up. If the, if the tutor is close to native, like, at, at the very least, you know, because it, the part of it is a sort of emotional thing. So I could see speaking to a, a second, let's say I'm learning Korean and I have a second generation Korean American who, who speaks Korean 99% like a native speaking Korean, I would use that person. I would not learn Korean from a, say, Caucasian American or African American, no matter how well they spoke the language, because I don't know, at some level, I want to have the sense that I'm dealing with the source. Not fair, but you asked me my uh, question, my, my perspective, because it's largely about uh, motivation. Uh, hello, people. Uh, Farsi and Arabic comes from Persian. Okay. Do you think in the language that you are fluent in now, or do you think in English in that? Uh, I've mentioned, uh, you know, this question has come up before. Uh, certainly when I was speaking the language that I speak really well, I'm basically going in the language, but there's always some amount of translating from English. And in the languages that I speak well, that's a very small amount. In the languages that I don't speak so well, it's a larger amount. It's a gradual progression. How many hours does it take to listen and read a day? Well. I listen as many, you know, as much as I am able to do. I always multitask. I always listen when I'm doing something else. So any activity that allows me to listen, driving, exercising, washing the dishes, going for a walk, that's when I listen. And then I try to get in another hour or so of reading. <laughs> I learned Spanish for three years. I learned advanced grammar. I can write essays. However, I can't speak at all. What is the approach to improve my listening or improve my speaking? Um, you know, honestly, you, I, 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 I like listening. I like the uh, mini stories, which have a lot of the high frequency verbs. If you can get a handle on those key verbs, it gets you started speaking. Uh, and then you have to find people to speak to and you have to speak a lot. But in order to express things, you have to get into the rhythm of some of the more frequent verbs, go, come, give, take, need, want, hope. That way you start to build something. And um, yeah, that's what I would do. Lots of listening and then lots of speaking. And try the many stories at the link. How do you choose a language to learn? Whatever I'm motivated by. So we were gonna go to Crete. So I learned Greek. Uh, we went to Israel. I started preparing, you know, trying to learn some Hebrew. Didn't have enough time at it to make much progress. Uh, but then when I went to Jordan and uh, I just felt Arabic was, you know, more interesting because there's so many more people speaking it. We have Farsi Persian speakers in Vancouver. Uh, so then I say, well, if I got Arabic and Persian, then why not Turkish? It just kind of flows one from the next. I have no plan. I uh, mentioned importing ebooks. Get foreign language ebooks without DRM. You know, the books that I have imported uh, Polish books, Ukrainian books, uh, even there were some Arabic uh, teaching materials that weren't very good, but I imported them. You have to experiment, uh, but it depends what the language is. What about water? I have a question about being a diplomat. What what do you think are the less known major diplomatic languages besides the obvious English, French, and Spanish? I don't know, but you have you could start at the UN. So obviously Chinese and Russian. Uh, I mean, there are very strong regional languages. I mean, Russian, if you want to talk about geographically, like obviously all of the Russian Federation, plus Central Asia, uh, former Soviet Union, many people in Eastern Europe. So Russian is a pretty strong regional language. Uh, Arabic is a big regional language. Indonesian, Malaysian is a big regional language. Um, 
Swahili. I don't know much about Africa, but Swahili, I think at least in East Africa is a big regional language. So these would be some of the regional languages that, in other words, when you say diplomatic languages, you mean languages that are spoken be outside the border of their country. Uh, did, did, did you learn Paris? Polish and a difficult language. Okay, so I mean, my Polish is not very good now, but I mean, I can read it, I can understand it. I, I was speaking it to some extent when I was working on it. I did a 90 day challenge in Polish, but having done Russian, Ukrainian and uh, Czech, uh, Polish is not very difficult. Uh, Polish has some things that are different from those other languages. The vocabulary, actually Ukrainian, Polish, the vocabulary is quite close. Uh, all right. How are you learning Russian? Da, 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 da. You can use Forvo Chrome extension for Farsi and for. Okay, I will look into that. I have not found any text to speech for Farsi for Persian. Learning now because I'm seven. Do you think Link will last another 53 years? Link will last longer than I will last. Okay, uh, my son is uh, in charge of Link. Lingo Steve, any reason? No, I can't remember how, how we came up with that. I've been learning Mandarin Chinese for over 10 years. I enjoy it a lot. I'm not great, but I've tried. The issue is people say, you just have a talent, but I feel it undermines your effort thoughts. Yeah, I very much dislike the people who say, oh, you just have a talent. Like the number of people who quickly dismiss language and say, well, you have a talent. I have no talent. I wasn't good as you know, languages at school. Um, so, but then, you know, people who say that to me, then I say, well, how many people would, would you do what I'm doing? Would you spend so much of your time um, reading and listening? I mean, you ask my wife how much time I spend on language learning. I mean, any free moment that I'm doing something else, I'm listening to the language. How many people do that? So um, I think that language, I go back to Kato Lom, the great Hungarian uh, polyglot of the previous century, and she said, language is your motivation or your attitude plus time divided by inhibition, frustration, and stuff like that. So anybody can do that. Anybody can be motivated to learn, can put in the time, and as long as they minimize resistance, frustration, inhibition, they will learn. Some will learn maybe a little faster than others, some might be better at pronunciation, some might be better at remembering vocabulary, but everyone can learn. And it doesn't require a special talent because we all learn our first language. Do you live in the Philippines? Spanish and French. So a lot of back and forth banter here. Do you agree that Arabic is more beautiful than Hebrew? You gotta be a little careful. You know, until we learn a language, some languages don't sound very attractive, okay? Uh, I used to think that Cantonese wasn't very attractive until I started speaking it. Then I get into the, the enjoyment of the language. On the surface, Hebrew doesn't sound very attractive. I would say on the surface, Arabic doesn't sound very attractive. Now that I've started speaking some Arabic, I enjoy it. I find it very strong. Uh, you know, so you, you start enjoying it. Uh, so I, I don't want to make judgments about a language that I haven't, that I don't really speak. Hello there, first time I get you live. I'm Brazilian, kind of trying to learn Japanese. Gives me inspiration. Good. I'm glad that that has, uh, I got a book on German by Gerda Dippmann. Sadly, it has, has no pages where it gives you the answers at the back. And I find, I don't know, that we have lots of material. I think. If you have a spouse who has a native speaker of the language you are learning, is it better? to still use a tutor or to decide to see what progress can be made with your spouse. Okay. My experience with my own spouse, my wife, uh, when I decided to learn Cantonese, she was not helpful. Very difficult. If you have a spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and you're used to speaking a certain language, it's very difficult to change those habits. But if you can make it work, go for it. I mean, it's obviously a very good resource. Can you reach a native level without living in the country for that language? People say you can't teach native level unless you have lived in the zoo with the animals. I mean, it's, it, it's, I don't want to say never, but it's, it's a big advantage. You can reach a very high potential level without going to the country, 
But to, to get to that additional level, I think you have to live there. Uh, language are in terms of business and making money. It depends where you are, it depends what business you're in. I couldn't answer that question. I am a non-native teacher, but you taught me how to learn German and Chinese on my own. All right, that's good. Hey guys, what's up? Have you s petition? I'm not a big how to learn French expressions. Yeah, I mean, the question is if you're with people and they're talking very quickly amongst themselves, it's going to be difficult to understand what they're saying. Uh, if you have good friends, then I would get them to record these conversations where they use their, uh, you know, frequent expressions, transcribe it, and then listen to it. Listen to it and read it. Uh, okay, that reminds me, I heard President Duterte consider changing the other country. Any foreign language singers you like? Uh, well, I mean, I like music, all kinds of music, uh, you know. Uh, we were in, uh, we were in uh, Lisbon, you know, Amalia Rodriguez, you know, Fados, Mihai Mathieu, yeah, Edith Piaf, yeah, um, Julio Iglesias, whatever, I like all music. Okay, uh, yeah, would you, the, the mini stories, I, I, I must say, even though I was involved in creating them, I didn't write them, we had a person write them, I find that it really prepares you for speaking. Uh, I am speaking in Persian and Arabic much earlier than I ever did, let's say, in, in Czech or Polish, because it, it gives you the verbs, it gets you in a position where you can start saying something. So very definitely. Uh, but it's still not a very long way into the language because you need so much vocabulary ultimately. But at least you can get started talking to people and with the tutor. So I would say yes. My experience has been that the mini stories enable me to start with a tutor much earlier. Do you think reading Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Trotsky in German will massively help my German? It depends what you're interested in. You know, if you enjoy reading those things, go for it. Um, I wouldn't. I, I find I have to be interested in and find that what I am reading is of value. I don't think reading Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Trotsky in any language is of any value. Uh, any thoughts about Latin? I had Latin at school. Uh, the argument is that it helps prepare you for other uh, learning other languages. If you want an, uh, an entry language into the Romance languages, I think that should be Spanish because it's also useful today. If you want to learn a language in order to encourage you to learn languages, I would say Esperanto would be the language because it's easy to learn. Apparently, I haven't learned it. I'm not motivated to learn it. But if kids at school learned Esperanto and gained a sense of confidence that they can learn languages, then that would be a good thing. Um, let's see. What do you recommend? Into learning a language where it's less popular and that's more difficult. No, you have to look for it. I look for content for Romanian. I look for content for Ukrainian. You just have to look. Uh, Google. Uh, what do you think people tell you not to learn a particular language because it's useless? Yeah, I mean, I had that. Uh, I mean, there are lots of language chauvinists out there. When I was, I was with some Russian speak Russian people in Vancouver and I said I'm learning Czech now. Oh, why would you learn in Czech? There's only 10 million people, it's useless. No, you learn the language you're interested in. It's not a matter of what's useful or useless. What does it mean to be at a native language in a language? Native level. Yeah, native level is the same as a native. Not very many people are going to achieve that. Uh, what, what uh, would you say you remember more is listening to audio than seeing it when you read or by searching words you encounter when you read. No, no. I, I learn the words mostly by reading. If I hear them, I don't get them. And then I do a bit of reviewing. And then if I see that word, and the first time I see it, I save it as a link. It's not yellow. Next time I see it, I've forgotten that I've never even seen the word before. But over time, as it shows up more and more in what I'm reading, it starts to click in. Uh, and the audio reinforces that. Sorry, do you agree that only world socialism? Okay, I, I don't want to get into a political discussion here. 
I've asked a similar question before, but I'm just wondering why Ling doesn't have Hindi. We now have someone who has volunteered to do the mini stories in Hindi. Uh, we're working with him or her. If that takes, if that happens, we will have Hindi at Link. It's all a function of availability of content for Link. We don't create our own content. So uh, we are, we do though offer some compensation for people who are willing to create uh, at the very least the 60 mini stories. So we're now looking at Georgian, Hindi, Hungarian that people are apparently working on and then will be added to Link. Uh, do you agree that it is easier to learn languages when you're rich and have lots of free time and and your hands and don't have to work for a living? Would socialism not resolve this? Uh, look, I don't want to get into a discussion on socialism. Uh, I don't think that, I don't know what the word socialism means anymore. Do you mean social welfare or social health, socialized medicine? Do you mean the Soviet Union? Uh, I don't know that language skills in the People's Republic of China in the old days or in the Soviet Union were particularly developed. I don't know. I think it's irrelevant. Uh, one of the most uh, multilingual countries in the world apparently is Ethiopia. I don't think they're particularly wealthy there. So no, the answer to your question is no. Can you learn French quickly if you already know Spanish? Not quickly, but you have some advantages. Uh, what did you think is the, uh, what do you think? Okay. What do you think is the best thing that the field of computational linguistics has achieved? I have not a clue. Uh, probably uh, text to speech and, uh, and, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, automatic translation, which is very useful. What is the hardest letter to pronounce in Arabic? Uh, Arabic, it's this ah oh, that comes at the end of some words. Sometimes it's it's pronounced ah, oh, sometimes ah, oh, who oh, ah. Oh. I find I'm still trying to get a handle on that one. Uh, Steve, can I have a tutor from YouTube because all the teachers I'm using currently is on YouTube. Sure, wherever you find them. Okay, I see mail. I, I think it has a great reputation, so obviously a lot of people really like it. Uh, the Persian Asimil is very good because they actually give you the vocabulary for each lesson. I don't like it when they only give you the translation. It's more distracting to have to read through the translation to get the meaning. Uh, some of them are good, some aren't. Like it's just another source of content. I don't think there's anything particularly spectacular about us email as compared to teach yourself or colloquial would you show us how you google for contents in a new language okay what you have to do is you say okay uh polish history okay if you google polish history you won't get anything so you then go to google translate and translate that into polish history in polish and you can add audiobook or ebook and then you google and that will then come up that bring up a lot of, of stuff if you're at an earlier stage, then you probably will do it in your own language, like Portuguese or in English, and you might simple stories in whatever. So you have to experiment with putting it up either in your own language or in English. English would give you access to more stuff or translate it into the target language. Uh, well, do you think it's bad to learn languages to impress and gain respect from people? No, any, any reason to learn languages is good. But if your motivation is primarily to impress people, uh, you won't uh, go very far. Thank you very much. And, and I will end it here. Bye for now.